Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Bueno, hoy os quiero contar un poco mi trabajo sobre los sentidos y cómo abordamos los sentidos a través de la memoria en nuestra casa. For me, it's really important today to talk about the senses and how we can invoke those senses through memory. Antes de os quiero contar un poco quién, quién somos, quién soy, quién son mis hermanos. Somos tres hermanos y yo soy el menor de los tres. So I want to talk about the three brothers that we are, that we have the serie de Candroca. I'm the youngest brother. So as the youngest brother, I deal with the desserts. Uh, my oldest brother, Juan, is the chef on the savory side, and the middle brother, Josep, deals with the world of wine. So with the three brothers having each different identities, we have a way to come together and create an experience for our guests. Yo os quiero contar que la razón por la que hablo así bajito es porque tengo distonía. So I want to talk to you about what you can tell that I don't really have a tone of voice. Que es, que es una condición neurológica que provoca espasmos involuntarios en la garriga que me impiden volar. So I have a neurological disease called dystonia, and what happens is that I cannot control the movements of my neck in my particular case, though it can affect other parts of the body. Por eso te hablo así bajito, pero bueno, se me escucha bien porque yo micro, con lo cual... So this is why I speak the way I speak, but hopefully you can hear a little bit of what I'm saying. Bien, antes uh, os quiero introducir el siguiente vídeo, que es un vídeo en el que uh, se cuenta muy bien cómo entendemos la memoria y cómo a través de ella creamos platos. So in the next video I'm going to show you is how we understand memory and how through the senses, whether all five or just the smell, or just from the palate, we can invoke certain memories from our past. So this video is inspired by Marcel Proust, who in the earliest 20th century wrote a work called In Search of Lost Time. And what he talks about is about how sensations and memories can be invoked through food. And so since we were very much inspired by him, we made this video. Nuestro verdadero pasado se oculta fuera de los límites de la inteligencia, en un insospechado objeto material en la sensación que ese objeto material nos despierta. Que nos encontremos con ese objeto antes de que nos llegue la muerte, o que no lo encontremos nunca, depende del azar. recipes and each of them represents a childhood memory that each brother has had. So this particular dish, for example, was inspired by his grandmother who made a lamb dish and with pan con tomate, which is something that they eat a lot in, uh, in Catalonia, which is uh, basically grating tomato over bread. And this dish is inspired by his aunt who made a lot of chocolate, homemade chocolate at home, and he would always complain as a kid, why is a chocolate ball so small? So in the restaurant, he would make it in a much larger size.
sabor perduran mucho más y soportan sin doblegarse en su impalpable gotita el edificio enorme del recuerdo. Bueno, un poco compartiendo esta idea de vincular la memoria con los sabores. Un papel fundamental para mí tiene lo, lo tiene el olfato. So now I would like to talk about the sense of smell. Que el olfato tiene una, una relación con la memoria muy íntima porque la presencia olfativa se percibe en el hipotálamo, que es donde guardamos las So the sense of smell is really important to the human because it actually goes all the way back to the hypothalamus, which is in the back of the brain, and that's the way that we use the sense of smell to invoke memory. So the way that we wanted to access the sort of invocation to memory through the sense of smell was through perfumes. So I decided to start the project by using bergamot, which is a type of lemon. It's much more fragrant than lemon, and it's a larger in size. And I realized this particular smell that bergamot had was in the perfume that my brother would wear. And this perfume was actually Eternity by Calvin Klein. So he decided, why can't I make desserts out of perfumes? So what he decided to do was basically deconstruct each perfume and figure out a particular aroma, a particular flavor that could go well and actually join them together. She would have a particular dessert that was deconstructed, for example, here in Miracle by Lancome. And after you would eat this dessert, what he would do is he would serve you a little bit of a perfume strip of that perfume, so you can put those two dishes together in, well, the dish and the perfume together, and you can find the similarity between them. So instead of just doing other dessert, other perfumes, he decided to make his own perfume. So this is called Nouveau de Limona, and so with, he was in contact with perfumers, the very same perfumes that you saw previously, and with them they worked together to create this dish. It was also based off the bergamot and the madeleine, and madeleine is a type of cake. Y después a partir de aquí también incorporemos técnicas que se usan en perfumería como el frenaje. And from then on, he's decided to go a little bit more further and adapt techniques from the world of perfumery, such as distillation and enfleurage, to things that maybe for us would be unedible objects. Como por ejemplo, el libro viejo. Los libros viejos tienen un olor muy particular. So old books, for example, have a very particular aroma when you open them. Y lo que hacemos es juntar grasa de su So what we would do is we take deodorized fat, so it's a fat has no smell, and actually spread it all over the old book, and that actually extracts this, that particular smell. Then you take the fat, you dilute it in alcohol, and the alcohol you will then distill, so you get a little bit of extract of old book. So this dessert is called milojas, which in Spanish is uh, translated to mil feuilles, which is also a French word, and it literally means a thousand pages. So they decided to call this dish a thousand pages. Y es un postre que sabe al libro viejo que realmente tiene este, este juego de comerse la literatura. So 
so it really invokes a memory because you're literally smelling and eating an old book. And for that, that was really important for him to be able that the guest could have that experience. <laughs> To go even further, he decided to also do aromas of pencils and erasers. <laughs> Invoking the memory of what he went through in school, writing, then erasing, writing, then erasing. So to go even further, uh, he was also inspired by the forest. Around Girona, there's a lot of forest uh, trees. And what he did is he made a cloud made of helium, uh, which is what you see on the top. And in the bowl, you would have all the things that you would probably find in the forest. It could be pine trees, it could be carob, so on and so forth. <laughs> So in the dining room, when you would receive this dish, uh, you would find a really thin piece of uh, steel that would sort of move along this, this particular cloud. And this cloud would then obviously condense. And as you can see, there are some drops of water. And so the idea was having a forest that was recently rained upon. It has a certain smell. And it's something that he lived through most of his life when he was living in Girona. So from the world of smell, he went into the world of colors and tried to do different kinds of dishes with different chromatographies of colors with, or within the same color itself, or as you can see on the bottom right, from yellow to red. So in this particular dish, for example, it would be different fruits having different colors from passion fruit to citrus fruit to orange to tangerine, but also coming together, they would really make a union. And they did the same thing with every single color. So he, at the same time, he met someone that has uh, what is called a chromatopsia, which is a person that cannot uh, perceive color. So he can only see black, white, and gray. So uh, this person, which you will see now in the next video, uh, enable for him to be able to see color, what he did is he inserted a chip in the back of his head, attached it to an antenna that comes a little bit up, up above the eyes, and through vibrations in the brain, he's able to translate what he sees into color in his mind. <laughs> So he's the only person in the world that can perceive color in this particular way. He can even see infrared and ultraviolet. So the way the, the system or the technology was made is for him to identify each particular color and make it have sense in his mind. And so this is the next video. Antes de 2004 no podía percibir ningún color, pero ahora puedo percibir todos los colores visibles e incluso colores que van más allá del ojo humano, como los infrarrojos y los ultravioletas. La antena percibe las frecuencias de luz y entonces un chip dentro de mi cabeza me permite escuchar el sonido de las frecuencias de luz. Por lo tanto, la relación color-sonido no es arbitraria. Me llamo Neil Harbison y soy un cyborg.
so what he he was inspired so much by Neil Harbison that he wanted to make a dish that was rotating and each color would have also a particular sound and have a particular taste. But unfortunately, it was a trial that never worked out. Because there was a particular order that he wanted the guests to eat the dish, because each, uh, as we said before, each flavor, each ingredient had its own tone. And sometimes when you serve the dish to a guest, they would like to move it, they take a photo, and then they move it again. So the symphony had no, or the melody had no, no order. But it was a very beautiful experience. So everything I'm talking about today ha makes sense because at the end I'm going to finish with a really short video and this is the final objective. So uh, a few years ago I opened a small chocolate factory in the heart of Girona. So I source uh, cacao beans from all over the world from very particular producers. And surprisingly, just like the world of wine, there's shades of cacao, there's all the types of flavors and different kinds of textures. And every one of us has a sort of a type of relationship with chocolate, generally linked to our childhood, which is always a safe environment and happy context. <laughs> and from there on, I also met a friend, and actually he just confessed that he thinks he has a lot of weird friends. <laughs> And he met this uh, particular person because it stemmed from the conversation that he had no voice and uh, this person actually is a chef who lost a sense of smell. And obviously you can imagine that's the hardest thing for a chef not be able to smell anything. And from there on, they realized that there was a lot of other people that have what is called anosmia, which is the the loss or the the loss of perspective or the sense of smell. And this obviously stemmed a lot more from COVID as well. And also he found out that people who had really severe sinusitis, which was left untreated for years, also ended up losing their sense of smell. And even uh, patients that went through cancer, cancer therapy treatments, they would also, unfortunately, some of them lose their perception of smell. So from there on, they decided to do an experiment. Uh, they would have different kinds of participants who had lost their sense of smell, and choosing a particular song, a lighting tone, or even a video art projection, uh, they were able to direct a certain uh, memory through chocolate as well, a certain memory, and this would be invoked to the patient, and they would realize that they could, through memory, remember what they ate, and it was very emotional for them. Vamos a construir una estructura donde se va a aislar la persona y ese aislamiento va a llevar ahí dentro toda la historia de la persona, sus vivencias, sus maneras de ser, sus experiencias, sus expectativas. Todo eso se va a meter en juego ahí dentro. 
más sus preferencias habituales del día a día. Si es el color azul, si es el color verde, si es la montaña, si es el mar, si es el silencio, si es una música, si es un olor determinado, de los distintos sentidos a la vez. En ese recinto, en ese cubo. Con tus gustos, con, tu, con tus sensaciones, te van a preparar un plato para ti. Joder, ya, ya es... Ya es mucho. Simplemente disfrutarlo y, y pasarlo bien, ¿no? ¿Cómo si quieres golosa? ¿Te gustan las cosas grandes? Sí, sí, son de chocolate mejor. Y yo creo que como de chocolate. Este relleno de un helado de té, Jazmín. Te va a poner los zombies. Te como si no te caliente, te caes mal. Aquí te gusta para hacer un chocolate de papa. Con esta coca de vidrio. La coca de vidrio más difícil que puedes hacer. Chocolate. Y más o menos, miras que este plato tiene vida propia y puede llegar, puede llegar volando a tu plato. que era para mí este post. Lo he notado. Era, era para mí. ¿Cuándo, ¿cuándo volvemos? <risa> So this was just a short excerpt, but if you want to see the whole video, it's about 15 minutes long, you can find it on YouTube. So as you can see, it was a study in a form of an experiment. It was meant to reflect the possibilities of high cuisine, uh, the explore the limits of the mind as well. And the idea was to help each person and to wake up each sense. Thank you very much and enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. It was fantastic. Thank you very much. I may not have a microphone. Yes, I do have a microphone. That's wonderful. We have some time now for some questions. So let's see, I'm going to need a little bit more house lights. And now don't panic, you know how to speak English. Uh, <laughs> and also just in case you have momentarily forgotten a question, is some kind of a statement or some kind of a sentence that has a question mark at the end. I would also love it if at the beginning you would just state your name and maybe three words about some context, perhaps what you work with or, or where you're from uh, to help us. And do we have a question immediately? We do not, so I will ask one first. Oh, there is one. There is one? Mm. Yes. Great. Thank you for a great speech. My name is Gustav. I work with Swedish Radio here in Malmö. And I was intrigued by the color symphony and the uh, harsh friction between ideas and concepts and, and the reception of them by people eating your food. And I would love to learn more about how you deal with that daily uh, in a restaurant like yours. I work for the radio of Suecia and I was very interested in the symphony of colors and how that can eh, entrar a la persona eh, y sí. bueno la pregunta es perdona la pregunta es cómo lo haces en el día a día si no lo puedes hacer en ese tipo de plato sí. cómo lo haces en tu día a día bueno yo, yo digamos que no, no utilizo esta, esta o sea quien, quien vive con esto cada día es nil que es que el tibor que tiene este implante en la cabeza que es el que percibe los colores de esta manera y les quiere experimentar esto cada día yo lo que hice fue usar este mismo digamos este programa Y hacer que cada, cada color que pasa por encima del 
So basically, he was the person that knows most about this is Neil Harbison, the cyborg. Um, but what he did was basically use this technology on a dish and made sure that every dish had a tone. Obviously, in the day to day, maybe it won't be a symphony in itself, but it would be certain tones that you can play with in the dining room. <laughs> So actually, the the reason why he made this rotating dish is because he wanted to make a symphony from Beethoven, um, but that didn't come out because everyone would like move the dish around, so it was not possible. But that was the final objective. <laughs> So, for example, Neil Harbison is able to paint songs. So he'll hear a sound and put that into color from what the sound basically translates itself into the vibrations, and it comes out uh, a painting. So the, the, the most beautiful idea, obviously, at the end of the day is being able to eat a song. Then uh, my, I have to ask, when you are working on these very conceptual dishes, is it important to you that the person who eats in your restaurant understands it? Do they have to get it? Or can they just eat? I think we're very fortunate that the people that come to our restaurant have open mind, basically, <laughs> and are up for anything. So I think they come with a previous previous knowledge, yeah. That's wonderful. Do we have another question? Be brave. <laughs> Down here. Yes, just please raise your hand. There we are. Thank you. Here, first. Thanks. Hi, I'm uh, Caroline from Germany, and I do multi-sensual event management. And for sure, like the vision of your food, smell, and taste is like the, maybe the biggest part. But I wanted to know if like the structure, the feeling of the food, um, also the temperature and the music, um, like sound, if you play with that in your dishes that you make. Yes. Textures and sounds. Textures and sounds. Eh, trabaja en eventos multisensoriales en Alemania. Y esta quería preguntar si eh, cada plato tiene como una estructura, siempre tiene un sonido. Eh, bueno, es decir, que, que en cada plato trabajas todos los sentidos. No, o sea, no, no, no es una manera tan, tan particular como, por ejemplo, el tocaplatos. Digamos que el sonido aquí sí que se veía representado. Pero cuando hago un plato no pienso tanto. So the, actually the sense of sound is the sense that he has least explored because when he's making a dish, he's not just thinking about what it's going to sound like. For him, it's really important everything else that comes into the mouth, which is basically the most one of the most intimate parts of the body, right? So what does it taste like? What is the texture? And obviously visually uh, and aesthetically. Pero, pero en este último experimento en particular, que es la, en el, en el de cacao, sí que el sonido era importante porque cada, digamos, a cada plato que le dimos a cada persona iba acompañado de un sonido que era confortante para esa persona particular. But it is true in the last video that we showed, which is the uh, Cacao Sense project, sound was very important because as they ate a particular dish, um, they had obviously had input previously researching on this particular person what they lived through their childhood, so on and so forth. And they would put a particular song or per particular sound could be waves of an ocean because that person lived there when they were younger. So in this sense, in that particular project, yes, sound did take, has it had importance. That's wonderful. Let's do one more question. Was there one right here? <laughs> okay, that question was answered. Then let's do down here. Thank you, in the middle of the row here. Is this is like the fourth row. Can you see where we are pointing? Please raise your hand very clearly. There we are. Yes, and there we go. Hola, Jordi. Muchas gracias por la plática. Oh. <laughs> eh, 
¿Qué podemos hacer nosotros en nuestro día a día para ser más inclusivos en la forma en que cocinamos para nuestros amigos y visitantes? And my question is, what can we do in our everyday life to be more inclusive towards the way we cook to our friends and family? Thank you. It's a good question. So maybe in a more closer environment with friends and family, you might know them a little bit and you can always make it a little bit more inclusive. But in the restaurant, for example, what they try to do is, uh, what they've done in the last few years was send a, like a questionnaire uh, and ask different kinds of questions, not only about what are your allergies, what are your food intolerances, but more about your childhood, your memory, mm -hmm. things for you that are really important. And from there, when you come, you have a particular experience. So obviously we have a lot more room to improve, but it is the beginning and we want to try to make it a uh, link into the, the senses. <laughs> So uh, basically this question was also filtered through uh, an ENT doctor, ear, nose, throat specialist, called Jose de Aro. And from then on, since he was very involved in the sensory world, this particular doctor, it was not only about questioning about your memory, but also about your senses and make it more tactile, make it have particular sound, uh, basically dealing with all the senses as much as possible, but obviously not losing from the experience of the restaurant. That's fantastic. I don't think we can top that, so I think we should end here. Thank you so much, Jade. Thank you so much, Jordi. Jordi, Roca. Thank you. Thank you.